Hi, welcome to Jackers Brewing Co. I'm Matt. If this is your first time here, welcome. We'd like to take the opportunity to uh, invite you to follow us on Instagram. We post there quite frequently on uh, some of the uh, special projects that we have going on before they appear here on the YouTube channel. Speaking of the YouTube channel, we post a new video every other Thursday. So for today's project, I want to talk about beginning brewing on the all grain side. If you watched our last video it, uh, for uh, beginner brewers, it was on the extract side of brewing. Now with all the hard work done for extract brewing on the all grain side, we were able to manipulate things a little bit better. And one of the first steps that we're able to do that, that all the hard work that was done on the extract side is in the mash. So for all grain brewers and all grain brewing, the mash is one of the keys to success that we are able to maneuver the beer one way or the other. And so in this mash, what we do is we take our raw ingredients, be it uh, most of the time grain, and we're gonna put this grain into water. Uh, the water is gonna be controlled at certain temperatures. The general rule is the higher the temperature, the like, uh, more sweeter it'll finish or the higher gravity it'll finish at and the lower that we mash in at uh, the more fermentable that this uh, wart is that we're going to create. We're able to gain certain uh, mouth feels with it also. While we're mashing in, uh, the temperature range also helps dictate the enzymes that are at work and these enzymes help take our starches and convert them into sugars. They also help make long chain sugars or short chain sugars, which help also dictate the fermentability of the wort. So during the mash, we need some time for all these starches and sugars to uh, be able to convert uh, each other into the, the, the wort. And a lot of the times uh, you can achieve full conversion in, you know, 20, 30 minutes or whatever. But when you're first starting off, uh, it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and figure for the 60 minutes uh, mash in times. So that way you can ensure that the majority of the wor work gets done in an appropriate amount of time. Sometimes it takes longer depending on how many specialty grains that you have in there, the amount of grains that you also have in there. One of the key things in the mash is uh, we have something that's going to be called the strike temperature. And so generally that's a little bit higher than your mash in temperature. So we bring our water up to the target strike temperature and that'll be the temperature that we're going to pour our grains for mash in and as those grains hit the water and have some time to soak it's going to drop that temperature in the mash time so one thing that we do here or that i do uh, when when brewing is i employ something called brew in a bag so with the brew in a bag system that we employ here, um, I'm able to only really have to worry about one uh, kettle. And I use that kettle to be able to mash in. Uh, I also will, after I pull the bag out with all the grains in it, I'll also use that same kettle to boil in and, and, and etc. You know, it's just a one vessel system. One of the biggest things that we as all grain brewers are able to do is, is we have complete custom ability, customization and the ability to uh, completely just have a different system from one another. You'll see some guys that do have brew in a bag systems that have another two or three vessels or kettles or whatever. That, that 
they uh, do some other things in, uh, like they'll do things like party guile uh, or, or whatever. But we'll we'll get into uh, a lot of different styles and uh, and other equipment that you can kind of rotate in and out of even when you brew in a bag um, to be able to do some different things, some different styles. But so for this particular project, what we did was um, I wanted something that was simple and easy to do. So I went to my local homebrew shop and in our first video, we did the extract kit of theirs for the cream ale. So I also purchased the all grain version of the same recipe and uh, I brewed it and I wanted it to be able to compare it for the extract versus all grain. And now this recipe is supposed to be fairly similar. Um, if you go back and you watch the uh, beginner brewers extract video, I had noted that basically you only have so much control over a beer with extract you know generally they're darker and you know some of those other things so I wanted to see what the difference was between the two like how drastically different it is um, how closely they are uh, taste wise so I brewed these things one week apart um, they're pretty much the same age minus one week um, so they're, they're right there um, but basically the process that we took was so our strike temperature was 159 our mash temperature was 149 degrees Fahrenheit uh, we mashed for 60 minutes and uh, the really cool thing about brewing a bag about brewing a bag is once I'm done mashing in I can pull those grains up those grains go pretty much directly to the chickens uh, from time to time I do save some of the grains and turn them into flowers and things like that that we use around here uh, to throw into like a, a meatloaf or we've made pies and, and, and other things like that. Um, I'm pulling together some resources to present uh, uh, another video on some stuff that we've done uh, to be able to reuse a, a resource. After our mash was done, um, and I pulled those grains out. We moved into the 60 minute boil. We had uh, two hop additions. We had one hop addition for 60 minutes and the last hop addition was at five minutes, just like the uh, extract kit. Um, also, just like the extract kit, I also opted to kind of one up it by using the Warflock tablet and the yeast nutrient. Uh, the Warflock tablet went in at 15 minutes uh, boil time and the uh, yeast nutrient went in at 10 minutes. Again, I felt like those things were kind of necessary for, the, for, that, for this project. Um, if I'm gonna take the time to brew, I want to try to have the cleanest uh, beer possible that, that on everything that I can control. And as I said before, and I'll say it again, uh, both those components over the long run, they're not that expensive to add to a brew. Uh, they're really easy to add to a brew. You just gotta remember the times, you gotta remember to do it. Um, that was one of the things that I fought with uh, when I was really trying to step up my brewing game was to get into the good habit of doing that. Um, speaking of good habits, uh, when all grain brewing, now when I brew in a bag, I like to keep a, a clean bucket to the side so that way I can pull it and, uh, and take that bag and then I'll put it in that, that bucket and kind of let it drain down a little bit. And uh, if I need to, I can take that wart that has drained out of there, pour it into my kettle to get that, um, that boil volume where it needs to be. Um, this was a 60 minute boil, so I was supposed to end up with about six gallons um, at the end of, of boil to transfer into the fermenter 
after transferring, I think it was just a little bit under six gallons because of some of the troop at the bottom. Uh, my kettle I have set up with a uh, dump valve and then on that valve I also have the uh, kettle strainer with the dip tube so that way I can kind of just open that thing up and just, just let it uh, start to drain into the fermenter without worrying about picking up a lot of that uh, troube at the, at the bottom. So the original gravity and final gravity specs of this thing, it was supposed to be uh, 1.050, 1.012. I got uh, 1052 and 1006, uh, starting gravity and final gravity. It's supposed to be about a 5% beer. I got 6% out of it. So starting off just a little bit higher and then coming down a little bit lower. Uh, can't can't really argue with that the extract brew was five uh, percent so not gonna be too too different as far as the alcohol feel I feel like uh, I mean it's only one percent I don't know if I could necessarily pick that up or not this uh, had 12 IBUs according to the spec sheet so after um, everything said and done uh, fermented out pretty quickly uh, I would say I bottled it after three weeks after pitching the yeast uh, just to make sure that I had enough time to finish fermenting out as is standard uh, around here I no chilled it after the boil um, once it came down to pitching temperature pitched the yeast let it let it ride out for uh, three weeks just to be sure that it had time to clean up any off flavors or, or anything like that. Um, then it spent a month in the bottle before I started taste testing these things. Um, everything's come out really good. It's a really clean drinking beer. And let's take a look at this thing here real quick. Carb carbonated pretty good. A nice little hiss. So when I carved this up, I used the same amount of priming sugar that came with the extract kit, which was five ounces of priming sugar. I think this thing is a little bit higher carbonated probably should be but got a good amount of uh, bubbles coming up through there smells wonderful looks wonderful great color on this so basically as far as the water goes on this um, I didn't treat any of the water with water salts like I would do with uh, pretty much any of my other beers I wanted to do that as a direct comparison uh, between this one and the the extract beer um, speaking of water basically if you're a beginner brewer I would say that uh, water salts is probably going to be one of the best things that you can never do to improve your beer. But if you have clean, drinkable water that you don't have to boil to drink it, you don't have to manipulate it in any other way, if you can drink it out of the tap and it tastes good, it smells good, I would say do a couple brews with that just to kind of get... Uh, some processes under your uh, feet now when it come comes to bottling this particular beer I didn't get any of the footage I figured uh, you can go back and view the footage for the extract uh, brew I wanted to save a little bit of time on this video because I know the other one got a little bit long but I am also planning on uh, a bottling 
video here before too, too much long. So that way I can break out some of those ideas that were in the extract brew and then talk about some things that I didn't get to really talk about there. So as you can see, again, this is a very beautiful beer. So nice and clean and clear-ish. Uh, it's got some chill haze on it, but good looking. Smells smells very good. So for the fermentables on this beer, it was uh, ten pounds two row, one pound carapils, one pound flaked corn, and then the hops, they were both Willamette, one ounce at the 60, and then one ounce at the five. And again, this is supposed to be one of those uh, nice, clean, uh, like alternative to like American lager beers, uh, lawnmower style. Nice and clean, good sweetness to it uh, from the corn, and then um, you get some of that hop on the on the back end. Now I think that this is it's a different beer than the extract beer for sure, or one of those. Here is the extract version of that beer. this being the extract this one being the all grain versions um, as far as smell goes smell really identical um, as far as the looks like I said you can tell that this one is the extract because it's a little bit darker As far as my preference goes, I prefer the all grain one. And the reason why I do is it feels a little bit more balanced personally. And the, this is something that I'm still trying to learn with beers that I brew. This one is not a bad beer. I would, I would drink a beer like this every day. I prefer this one because it just has a certain balance to it. Um, it finishes just a little bit sweeter, I feel like, but it's just a lot more just evenly balanced, if that makes any sense to you. And it's taken me a little bit to learn what a balanced beer is. Um, now, I can't always pick them out. Generally, I kind of prefer the beers that kind of finish a little bit sweeter. Uh, most of the time I have with doing all the farmhouses and things like that and the saisons and, and whatnot have really learned what a dry beer is and how delicious those can be too. 
um, when, back before when I really started getting serious and I was um, making my own recipes, I wasn't throwing a whole lot of hops at things and, and, and stuff like that. And so everything just kind of had a certain like almost sweet tooth or, or malt tooth kind of um, finish to them. And that's in style on some things, but not on others. And so trying to learn that and, and, and things like that has kind of been fun to experiment with. Both are, are very good beers. I just I prefer this one a little bit more. So do uh, my friends that I've shared them both with. So with everything wrapped up now at this point, between showing an all grain brew and a extract brew, for the beginner series, I'll start breaking out um, some more techniques and some more kind of tips as uh, we progress. As I've progressed, as I learned some things. I've got a few newer or, or a few different uh, beginner type kits uh, to present. I've got a uh, the the bottling um, video coming up uh, that I'll, I'll start shooting here before too much longer to be able to present to people the way that I bottle uh, because I bottle condition pretty much everything right now. I need to finish getting my keyser fixed so that way I can have a little bit more beer storage. So this has been an exciting experiment to be able to finally brew two of the same style back-to-back -back extract and, and all grain. And uh, I, I thought that this would be a very good beer to compare to uh, being the style that it is. So I just would like to thank you for stopping in. If there's anything that you want to see, both be it on the extract or the all green beginner side, uh, something that I've missed or whatever, please leave a comment. I'd appreciate it. Uh, I'll try to circle back and, and, and pick that up. There are some other content within this series uh, coming as soon as I have some time to film them and, and, and get uh, that knocked out. But there are some that I've already filmed that I just need to finish going back and editing uh, some of the like more technique stuff like brewing a bag. I'll try to dive into that a little bit more um, or uh, no chill and, and things like that. Uh, things that I get asked a lot of questions about. Um, so that's going to be fun. Keep an eye out for that. Until then. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Remember, like, subscribe, leave a comment.